Welcome aboard Vanguard, a CE Category A Explorer yacht built to MCA Cat Zero standards with an angle of vanishing stability of around 90 degrees. I've been following Vanguard's journey for years and when the owners invited me to join them for a sea trial in Parma, I couldn't say no. Before she heads off to explore the US East Coast, the Caribbean this winter and the Arctic next summer, I wanted to step aboard and experience this incredible explorer yacht for myself. If you are a member of my channel, check out the video I've uploaded in the members section. It covers how Vanguard's engines are started and how the tender is launched and recovered. If you're not a member yet, then I'll leave a link in the video description. So welcome back to the channel. This is a video that I've been really looking forward to filming and I know a lot of you have been eagerly anticipating this video. Here we are aboard hull number two of the XPM 78 range of long range explorer yachts, Vanguard. She was launched only recently and I'm here in Parma having been invited back on board by the owner who I've got to know over the last couple of years and who I consider a friend. So. Join me on this video as I take you on a tour around this beautiful vessel. Before I do, please don't forget to give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe as well. Let's see if we can get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. By the way, now that Vanguard is complete, the owner may consider putting her up for sale in the near future as he looks towards his next project. If you'd like to be the first to know when Vanguard becomes available, sign up for my free newsletter. The link is in the video description. But now let's crack on with the yacht tour. So if we start off, I'll show you the swim platform to begin with. As you can see, we've got the passerelle over here on the starboard side. We've got some stairs over there on the port side that lead up onto the boat deck and again over here on the starboard side as well. And there we have the entrance into the engine room. I'm going to take you in the engine room towards the end of the tour, but that is one way of getting into the engine room. And you'll be interested to know as well uh, that if you are at sea and you need to get access into the engine room, there's internal access as well. As you can see, we've got a large boat deck here, really decent sized tender over here on the port side stowed away and the crane over there on the port side as well. So you can really quickly deploy and recover the tender. This 90 kilogram carbon fiber folding crane has a weight limit of 1,500 kgs and can be operated both manually and electrically. And personally, I think that is the perfect tender for an Explorer yacht like this. But let me know what you think in the comments below. As you can see, we've got the overhang here from the superstructure. So when you are sat in here, enjoying a drink, having some dinner, you can, of course, escape the sun into the shade. L-shaped seating over here on the port side. And the other thing that you'll notice as well, as we walk around, there's plenty to grab onto. There's grab rails absolutely everywhere. Remember, this boat has been built and designed to go out in the sort of conditions that most other people would probably not venture into. And you'll see that as we walk around over here, of course, we've got a grill. Open that up and show you that. Fantastic place to serve up some burgers and some sausages where your friends and family sat over there on the old shaped seating. Now, if I open this up as well, I'll show you in here. In the unlikely event of an emergency, this cabinet houses clearly labelled critical controls, including the engine fuel shutoff system and switches for essential systems like the hybrid e-motor battery stop. I'll close that later on when I come back. You'll see as well on the deck, we've got non-skid finish on the deck. Again, really, really important feature. When you're out here underway in the gnarly stuff, this is gonna keep you from slipping over. So it's a really, really important thing. And you'll notice as well, you probably actually won't notice in the camera footage, but there is a slight camber on the deck as well. So any surface water that does come on the deck will quickly run off back over the side. Okay, right, let's turn around. I'm gonna take you up to the flybridge later on. That's an area I'm sure you're gonna to love to see. 
But first, let me take you into the saloon. Mention, of course, the threshold on there. Look at that threshold and that door. Once that door is shut and this deck, if you're in the really big stuff, becomes a wash, when you're inside, you're not gonna get any ingress at all. So yeah, again, a really important safety feature, a big threshold on that door. Let's walk in and over here on the port side, we have the galley. A few things to point out in here. Firstly, I mean, what a view the chef gets when they're cooking up your meal. Check that out. I like the open plan layout is here is in here as well. So when you're cooking up dinner, you can interact with the guests, with your family. So obviously you can see there's plenty of seating all around and we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a minute. Induction hob over here. And another feature that I like, I press this button and up raises an area where you can stow away some more gear. A really nice feature, I'll shut that back down. Another really important safety feature up here are the fiddles. And these are deep fiddles as well. You really can get your fingers behind that. So again, if you're up here using this area in the rough stuff, you've got plenty to hold on to. Cold storage over here. This does have a trash compactor up here as well. And there's a dishwasher behind that as well. But yeah, if I take you over here and just kind of pan around so you can see the layout in here. Really, really good visibility. Tons of natural light coming in. You can see over here, we've got plenty of VHF radios as well. Great place to stow them. So when you are going out onto the upper deck, you're definitely not gonna take, forget to take your VHF radio because it's right in front of you. More grab rails there, look. Again, something to hold on to when you're walking around in the rough sea. Right, let's move forward. Over here on the port side, L-shaped seating area. Really, really cozy, really nicely laid out. And over on the opposite side, starboard side, another seating area over here as well. Retractable TV into that cabinet tree. So if I move over here, let me show you the view when you're sitting down relaxing. There you go, you can imagine the TV popping up over there. Another important feature as well, as you can see, there are lots of blinds in here because there's lots of windows but you'll be pleased to know these can open and close with just a touch of a button. So literally press a button, within 30 seconds, the blinds are either up or down, depending on obviously how you want this area to be or what you're using it for. Of course, up forward, we've got this really, really impressive helm station. Vanguard actually has three steering systems on board, which includes the hydraulic emergency steering should the two fly-by-wire steering systems fail. The three large multifunction displays show all of the boat's critical systems as well as the digital Ectis charts. The Ectis system allows for automated route planning and monitoring and is an essential tool for modern marine navigation that provides accurate and real-time data, which is essential for safe passage making. Each helm seat has its own trackpad, allowing control of either the Mimic display or Time Zero charts without needing to get up for the touchscreen. It's a convenient feature, especially when used with a keyboard for data entry. In the centre are the autopilot controls, while at the top are the dynamic positioning system controls. On the brow, these displays monitor and control Vanguard's power systems, including generator output, AC loads and solar power. Next, we have the ICOM VHF radio for ship-to-ship -ship comms, the AIS transponder for tracking vessels, and an engine monitoring display providing critical engine data. And of course, we have the aptly named fun handles for the twin engines on board, as well as the controls for the bow thruster. Of course, we will go into more details with the engines when we venture down into the engine room later on in the video. But what do you think of this helm station? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comments below. The shock's helm seats on board are equipped with advanced shock absorbing technology designed of course to mitigate impacts and provide comfort in rough conditions. I like the fact that you can configure this seat so you can either lean up against it or of course nestle yourself into it whilst you're underway. Okay, let's go out onto the upper deck. We're going to access the upper deck via port door over here through the pantograph door. 
Something I want to point out as well is that these are load bearing. So you can actually, there's four of these dotted around the upper deck. You can lift the entire weight of this vessel uh, using these, which, as you can probably imagine, the amount of engineering that's gone behind that. Uh, so these are engineered into the hull. So yep, if you happen to be in a dock where they can't lift your boat out using the conventional straps, then this boat can be lifted using them, which I think is really impressive. As we move forward now, of course, got those forward raking windows with an overhang up there as well. So if you are operating the boat and you're literally trying to escape from the sun, you're not gonna have the issues of glare, which again, really nice feature. And you can see as well, we've got the non-skid finish up here. All right, let's move forward. As you can see, we've got a spare anchor stowed away on there, tightly secured in there. Let me take you now up to the forepeak. Now you might be asking why this particular area is recessed down. So when this massive rock near anchor uh, is being pulled back in, all of the mud, all of the sand that comes up with the anchor will stay in this area here and you can just quickly wash it away so it doesn't cover all of the upper deck. You've got a towing bollard over there right on the bow, vent pipes over there on the starboard side. If I move over here to the right, you can see the chain locker. The 110 kilogram Rockner main anchor is paired with a 30 kilogram Fortress Kedge anchor. For the Rockner, we've got 100 meters of G40 14 millimeter galvanized chain. As I pan around now, I'll show you the profile of this boat. Again, absolutely stunning design. I really, really like it. You know, I feel emotionally attached to this boat just because I've been following this journey so closely now for a couple of years. Uh, if you subscribe to my channel, you probably would have seen the video that I made about a year and a half ago when she was coming towards the end of her uh, build period in the yard. So to come back here today in Palmer and show you around really is a privilege. Of course, we've got lots of solar panels dotted all around the superstructure. Vanguard is equipped with a six kilowatt solar array, which generates around 1.4 kilowatts of power for around six hours a day. And while solar helps, it's only a partial power provider. The owner did actually improve the efficiency by 20% through careful panel grouping and reducing shading caused by the instrument mast. The system now produces up to 10.45 kilowatts per hour on a good day, which I think is impressive. And of course, you can see we've got, again, plenty of stuff to grab onto. Underneath that cover is a forward-looking infrared camera. Uh, again, another really important safety feature. Obviously, radar is paramount, but you cannot beat a visual line of sight. And at night, forward-looking infrared, uh, again, is a really important safety feature. Let's move towards the stern now, and we'll come back aft using the starboard side deck. And as you can see, look, more solar panels around there as well. On the starboard side, we find the filling station. Vanguard is equipped with substantial tank capacity, holding 9,640 litres of fuel, 7,100 litres of fresh water, and both grey and black water tanks at 800 litres each. And of course, vital, vital safety gear here, life raft and an EPUB as well. And if you are looking to upgrade any of the safety equipment on your boat, then be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate stores. Uh, I'll leave a link to my website pinned in the comments. Let's open this up and see what we've got behind here. Okay, I'll close that later. Right, let me take you down into the engine room and then from there we'll access the accommodation. So down these steps, step onto the passerelle and here you get a good look at the uh, swim platform as well here. And here we go into the engine room. And to be honest with you, for a boat that's 78 feet, I actually thought the engine room would be a lot smaller, but it's not. There's so much equipment packed into here. To begin with, here we have the hydraulic power pack with dual electric motors, providing hydraulic pressure to essential systems like the winches and bow thruster. 
over there on the starboard side, the water maker, that can produce about 200 litres of fresh water per hour. Here we have the Isotemp water heater that provides reliable hot water on board with durable stainless steel construction for marine conditions. Moving back over to the port side of the engine room, this VM2300 digital steering control manages the yacht's electronic steering system, providing direct control over the vessel's rudders. This is the heart of Vanguard's electrical system. These Victron Multi Plus inverter chargers convert DC battery power into AC for onboard use and charge the batteries when connected to shore power. Combined with the yacht's solar array and her hybrid drives, Vanguard achieves near total energy independence at anchor. If you are mechanically minded and you know your way around an engine room, you'll probably notice the size of these fuel filters. These are actually a lot bigger than the boat requires, but you know this boat is all about redundancy, ensuring that everything is as over-engineered and as over-outfitted as possible. I love the fact back here as well, we've got a workbench so you can carry out any minor repairs, any minor tooling that needs to be done, you can do that on there. And the headroom in here as well, really impressive headroom. As my regular subscribers know, I'm about six foot four and I've got about four inches uh, above me. Next we come to Vanguard's Praxis Green Battery Lithium Battery Modules. These high capacity batteries store energy from the boat's solar array, hybrid drive and shore power. This stored energy is essential for powering the vessel's systems when at sea or anchor. Advanced lithium technology allows for faster charging and greater efficiency than traditional batteries, contributing to Vanguard's goal of energy independence and silent operation while at anchor. This is the Praxis Energy Management System monitoring and controlling all of Vanguard's electrical and energy systems in real time. And of course, another really important safety feature there you can see the hatch, emergency escape hatch, that leads out onto the upper deck. Vanguard is powered by two John Deere 4045 hybrid engines, each continuously rated at 160 horsepower, meaning that they can run at full power 24 hours a day without compromising reliability. These EPA Tier 3 compliant engines provide 100% redundancy for long range safety and a hybrid eliminating the need for separate standalone generators. Connected to twin disc gearboxes and Brunton's Verifold propellers, they deliver efficient power for both single or twin engine operation. With a cruising speed of around eight to nine knots, Vanguard has a range of over 3,000 nautical miles. In case you were wondering what stabilizers Vanguard has, and you might have noticed them in the opening sequence of the video, she is fitted with DMS Magnus Master stabilizers. These use the Magnus effect to create stabilizing forces and are self-folding, retracting into cofferdams for protection when not in use. They are controlled through the Praxis Mimic display and run on 230 VAC, ensuring stability even at anchor or low speeds. But what do you think of the engine room and the machinery fitted on board Vanguard? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, that is the engine room. Let me now take you into the crew accommodation through this door. Oh, it's nice to be back in that air conditioning. I think it's probably about 27 degrees today here in Palmer. And me being the English chap I am, I don't fare up particularly well in warm weather. So yeah, it's really nice to be back in the air con again. So as you can see, we've got two beds here. I pretty much would call this top bunk a double. And obviously you've got another bunk underneath that as well. Plenty of cabinetry in here to keep all your stuff. We've got a seating area over here as well. And ventilation, a really nicely lit area as well. As you can see, this area does benefit from big windows as well. You know, on some crew cabins that I've been in on boats of a similar size or even bigger, they don't get as much space as what you get on here. Uh, escape hatch there, takes you straight out onto the upper deck. If you're wondering how you get up there, here we go, look, on this bulkhead, we have the steps. Pull them down and then up you go. Okay, let's put them back in. I don't want anyone to catch themselves on that. Let's come back past this door. Show you, look, over here, we've got the control for the air conditioning as well. 
personally, if that was me, I'd probably have that on about a minus 10. But anyway, all right, let me take you into the shower here for the crew. And obviously the toilet, heated towel out there, decent sized shower. Yeah, there's plenty of space in here for your crew. Chop off standard Royal Navy salute as you were. So yeah, that is the crew accommodation area. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. I'm not gonna lift it up, but underneath these steps, again, we've got more area for storage. So yeah, you can lift this up. Stow away plenty of stuff under there. And as you can see in the cabinetry on these bulkheads, these just pop out. Uh, you get access to various fuse panels, etc. behind there. All right, now let me take you back up into the galley, into the saloon because now I'm going to take you into the guest cabin. So forward, we have the VIP cabin in there and midships is where we find the master cabin. As you see, washer dryer in there. And again, that air conditioning is so badly needed for me right now, but look, Lots of headroom in here, lots of space to stow away all of your gear, all of your clothing for those extended voyages. Retractable TV in that cabinetry as well. As you can see, obviously the blinds are shut at the moment, but these can open up and allow lots of natural light into this area as well. Uh, as I say, it does have air conditioning throughout the accommodation, uh, but the owner of this particular boat, they've got some fans up there as well. So. At night, if you don't want the air conditioning on, if the air conditioning is a bit overkill at night, but you still want a bit of a breeze, turn them on and you can stay nice and cool. But yeah, very, very nice area. Really well designed. Uh, the owners have done a fantastic job. I'll take you into the owner's ensuite. You see big shower over there. Obviously you've got the toilet and a sink as well with some more storage underneath that I'll even chop off another salute but yeah let me just pan around fire extinguisher over there again you can never in my own personal opinion you can never have too many fire extinguishers on a boat you just never know and I think it's always good to make a mental note of where they are especially if you're a visitor on a boat it's always a good idea to make sure you know where all of the safety gear is on board now let's check out the final cabin really really spacious vip cabin this is actually being used at the moment uh, by the owner's son uh, who's living on board obviously with his parents but wow what a cabin as you can see we've got fans over there on the bulkhead so it is fully air conditioned down here but if you did want to turn off the air conditioning then you can turn that off put the fans on and still get a nice breeze as well and check out that view as well through that hatch you can just imagine the view at night when you're laying in bed, especially if you're on the way. Uh, big windows in here as well. Obviously you do have blinds on here, uh, but you've got lots of natural light coming into this area. Some good cubby hole space on that bulkhead as well. A seating area over here on the port side. And of course, I do like the fact that the bed is raised as well. So you step up these two steps, you can get access both along the left and right hand side of the bed. And over here on the starboard side, now look, if you had to do your homework whilst you're on the way or whilst you're on board, what a place to sit and do it. You can just imagine being sat here as a teenager and being overwhelmed with the amount of homework that you have to do, only to then step up, take a brief look out of the window and check out the seascape, feeling totally revigorated before you get back down to your desk and crack on with your assignment. We've got the digital controls for the air conditioning as well. And lots of storage behind that door. So plenty of hanging locker space, plenty of drawers to keep all of your stuff. And of course, we do have the ensuite in here. So open this up. Nice, decent sized shower over here, rainhead shower. And look, another heated towel rail over there. And of course, the toilet. So yeah, this is the VIP cabin. I absolutely love it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And the other thing as well, again, I really do like the indirect lighting in here. You can imagine at nighttime how this area looks. 
uh, I bet it is very, very relaxing. Right, anyway, let's head back aft, up these stairs, passing the owner's cabin again over on the right-hand side, take you back up into this open plan living area. Again, if I just stand over here to give you a different vantage point of the layout up here and that view as well. Look at that, fantastic view. The first time I've been to this marina, but obviously in terms of boating fans, it's a bit of a boating paradise. I absolutely love it here. I right, continue back aft, out onto the boat deck, and we're gonna swing left and I'll take you up onto the flybridge. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got some great boats coming up. And if you give the video a like at this point in the video, it will really help with its reach. So of course, over here on the starboard side, got a fully kitted out helm station. Obviously ship's wheel, throttle control levers for the engine, autopilot, VHF radio, rudder angle indicators on there, and two big multi-function displays as well. Obviously there we've got the button for the horn, tempted to press it, but I don't want to get into trouble, so I'll resist the temptation for now. Over here on the port side, port quarter, L-shaped seating area, and again, look, really good use of space in terms of solar panels. They are literally everywhere. And up here on the overhead, you can see these poles actually are for the awning for the boat. So yeah, when the boat deck's not in use, you can get some awning out there for some additional shade as well. And again, look, even if you need to go out there to clean the solar panels, maintain the solar panels or fit some more, you can just get easy access to it via that walkway there. And again, you've got the non-slip finish. There's the port life raft over there. And look, another seating area. And what a great place to come and sit whilst you're underway. The captain at the helm, friends and family sat aft. And look, some more seating over here. And what a view. And again, look, if I show you just over here, you can get another view of those solar panels. And of course, Flirt camera there as well. But again, plenty of headroom up here. Big, sturdy, hard top. So if you do want to helm the boat from the fly bridge, but you don't want to be exposed to the sun, you've got plenty of shade up here. And if I sit over in the captain's seat quickly and show you the view you get. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Lots of catamarans over here, sunroof catamaran there. And look, check out that Virgin cruise ship. That's the first time I've seen a Virgin uh, cruise ship in person. Very, very impressive. But yeah, the uh, evening wind is starting to pick up now. I cannot remember what the Spanish term for that wind is, but yeah, you can feel that starting to pick up. And look, you can put your feet on there as well if you want a bit of extra comfort or bunker down. If you're brave enough to come up here and pilot the boat, from the flybridge during some rough weather passage making. But yeah, let me know what you think of this flybridge in the comments. Guys, thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I really hope you've enjoyed having a look around Vanguard uh, as much as I did when I first came on board. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owners and the owner's son who's currently holding the camera uh, for letting me come on board and film their beautiful yacht. If you haven't already, don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then feel free to get in contact with me. I'll leave all my contact details pinned in the comments it'll take you to my new website have a look around there and remember if you're looking to charter a yacht anywhere in the world any budget 
remember to get in contact with me, send me a DM, and also don't forget I've got a newsletter as well, a free newsletter that you can sign up for if you want to be kept up to date in terms of what's happening in the Explorer, Trawler, Expedition Yacht World, then be sure to sign up for that newsletter as well. But until next time, fair winds and following seas. Thanks, Reese. If you love these sort of explorer yachts, then be sure to check out the video that I made about the Arxon 85. You'll find the link in the video description. And also check out the video that I made about this vessel. She's called Paulstar. She's an LRC 65. And again, you'll find the link for that video in the video description. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my YouTube channel by becoming a member. If you'd like to join them, head to the link in the video description. Thank you.